first of all, I really enjoyed that film. I liked the, 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 the combination of, there was a certain Keaton-esque element to Daniel Arnold's character, the, the stone-faced element, and I, I really loved that, without being a kind of archetype. And there was also something Zeffirelli-like about the film as well, in the absurdism. And I've seen a lot of Morris Panitch's work. Um, and I, I guess, I, I would guess this is a two-hander. I haven't seen the play, but is the play a two-hander? Yeah, yeah, the play is, uh, it's literally just two actors on stage. And the whole thing. Just talk about developing uh, the play into a screenplay, because sure. you had a hand in that. Uh, well, uh, Daniel and I, Daniel and I, uh, originally, uh, I had this idea that I would, uh, that I said, hey, let's do this play. And he went, uh, no, let's not, but let's make it a movie. <laughs> and uh, so Daniel's the one who, who came up with the idea of it as a movie, and really he just thought, uh, you know, it would be a great, uh, a great two-hander. We could do it on weekends with friends. We wouldn't need much money. It would be uh, really simple, and we'd do it quickly, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, and it turned out to be a much bigger thing. We uh, we ended up optioning it from Morris and uh, and getting some development money from uh, from Chorus Entertainment, which meant that uh, it just started becoming a little bigger right from the start. And talk about the challenges inherent in things getting bigger because right. it's a, it's in some ways it's much easier well, to produce. Well, I, I guess film. there's there's two levels of, the, levels of that. I mean, creatively, uh, what we had was a screenplay that uh, that we had to open up the world. We had to we had to add more characters. Uh, it's still it's still kind of a two-hander at its heart, but mm -hmm. but we had to bring in uh, you know the fiance is only ever mentioned, uh, Jill's only ever mentioned, and Zoe doesn't even exist in the play. Uh, and so the you know the challenge of that was. Um, the, well, let me tell you the, the conceit of the play. The, mm -hmm. the way the play works is it goes scene by scene, it's just 12 long scenes, and in between each scene, something bad happens to Lawrence. And so at the beginning of the new scene, you see uh, a black eye or a head bandage or something, and then you, throughout the course of the scene, uh, Morris weaves his magic and, uh, and, and gets you laughing and you learn what happened to him. And okay. so the first thing was we had to go, uh, we, we had to make it bigger in that way. We had to, you know, we had to recognize films a visual medium, and we want to see him get hit by that car, and we want to see the acid and the eye drops and all those things. So we had to create those moments. Um, now, having said all that, did you mean on a pr producer practical level? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I got to the nub of exactly what I was asking. I like to call it parrying over periwinkle in some <laughs> respects. Uh, so, but what I'd like to do is, is we're sucking the air out of the room. How about you guys? You want to join us? <laughs> Put up your hand so that we can see you because it's a little difficult to see in the audience. We'd love to entertain your questions if you have questions for the director, producer, line producer, and actor. Don't be shy. Jump in there. Sorry, I see a camera out there. But sorry, what was that? Repeat the question once more. Ask those two. Oh, the gaffer, I'm sorry, yeah. He was the in gaffer. the gap grip, you were... He's still hiding there, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but in the grip gaffer department. Yeah. Shoot, go ahead, fire away. I'm not shooting. Um, when you're looking at a script, and you found this play, what appealed to you that you didn't have to go through Did you catch that? Just kind of the black humor? Is that what appealed to you? Or was it the oh, pictures, the, pi just, the just play? Why we presented? chose it. Uh, um, yeah, uh, personally, and, uh, and I'm, I'm speaking a little bit for Daniel, but personally, uh, I love, I mean, I, I love comedy, first of all. Uh, I, I started doing improv in my, my teen years, and, uh, and, and that's where I come from. So I love comedy. And the, the black comedy, the aspect, you know, when we talk about black comedy, we just generally kind of generalize that and go, uh, what's that about? Is that, a, you know, unlikable characters or really bad things happening? And, and so I really had to think about it and define it. And for me, uh, the, the, when I love a black comedy, what I do love about it, when I think of the movies that I love, uh, it's they surprise me. When I think there's nowhere further to go, they hit me with it. They go, bam, you can't believe that's about to happen. Uh, you know, when you think of a movie like, I don't know, like Heathers, or um, if anybody knows the movie Very Bad Things, there's moments in those movies where, where you just kind of go, okay, I see what's about to happen, and you cannot believe that they actually go through with it. 
And so for some people, you know, if, you're not if you don't have that expectation that it's a dark comedy, it's hard to watch. But if you come in knowing that, it, it's kind of delicious. You can relish it. And, and I guess for me, uh, what we've created in this movie are moments like, like the, uh, the drain cleaner and the eye drops, where, where hopefully you're sitting there going, oh my god, there's no way he's going to do that, right? Uh, and, and when he does, it's somehow horrifying, but also satisfying. And that's the, that's the comedy of it, and that's the darkness of it, all in the same moment. So to me, personally, that's what draws me to it. Um, Paul was with us from the start also. What, what, what was it for you? What, what's the well, I actually saw the play in 1999 at the Arts Club in Vancouver. And I've always been a fan of absurdist theater, that tradition. So that play always stuck with me. So when they mentioned to me that they'd be interested in me producing it, since I'd seen the play and loved that type of humor and absurdism, I jumped on board. Other questions from you, the audience? Just put up your hands so that I can see where you are. And uh, uh, right there in the middle. Talk, yeah, talk about the marriage to the movie <coughs> aspect for uh, four years, a commitment. Sure, sure. I mean, it, you know, the reality is it could have gone faster, but, but to get the movie we got on screen, uh, it needed that time. It needed that time to kind of to gestate and, and create itself. Uh, it started with, with us adapting the play and finding what the world was, um, but it also kind of, you know, the creative goes hand in hand with how do we get it funded and how much money do we need, et cetera. And, and something just on, the, on a producer level that's, that most people won't know is a lot of the, you know, we're lucky in Canada to have uh, funding bodies. There's Telefilm Canada, there's the Harold Greenberg Fund through Astro Media, there's the Chorus Entertainment, uh, NBC, Creative BC, and here there's, there's uh, government uh, funded agencies that help with film. And so we're lucky in that way. But how they work, how many of them work, are the ones that we got, the development funds are, they work in, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Paul, because they're kind of, they're kind of a short-term loan and they're no risk loan. So if you, they give you money so you can have time to write the, the screenplay. And then if you never ever make the movie, they don't collect, they don't come knocking on your door, it's okay. But with the idea that you know, they give you the money because they think it's gonna be good, they support it and they wanna be behind you on it, um, they're trying to help you make the next great Canadian film. And so when you do make the film, the first day you go to camera, that, that money gets absorbed into your budget. And so, in a nutshell, what that means is, if you're planning to do a movie for $5,000, all of a sudden you can't because you've just, you've just paid screenwriters and you have to pay that money back eventually. Uh, so, what it meant for us, we kept having to go, we were forced to go bigger and bolder and, and you know, reach higher. So, it made us strive for a bigger film instead of something shot on weekends with friends. Uh, so, so, kind of the, the development history was, what, what did we get? We got, one grant at the beginning that helped us option it. Then we got uh, something for, for another draft. Yeah, we went through at least two or three drafts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We Did went through, like, I don't know, 17 drafts overall. That's why it takes so long. Um, and then the, with the funding agencies, there's a timeline, yeah. so it can take maybe like half a year to a year to do each draft by the time the funding deadlines come around and you write it and then you get paid. So, yeah, it can take like eight to 10 months. Yeah, and to, do, and to do that, um, to do that, a part of that is, and you don't have to do it that way, you don't have to make the film that way, but that was our choice. We wanted to make what you saw. And in order to do that, we had to take our time. Uh, and a big part of it is each time we connected with Telefilm, with Super Channel, with anybody who was a supporter of us, we also showed them the script and asked them, what do you think? What's your opinion? And these are people who are experts in their field. And uh, for example, uh, Marguerite Pickett at Super Channel is somebody who we spoke with, and she's one of a, a very well-respected story editor. So when she had comments about our script, we listened. And so that takes time, but it also makes the movie better. And we did that all along the way. And so, yeah, it, it took a long time. Could have been faster, but I don't think it would have been. Four years is actually quite fast for an independent film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From experience, I know all the other features yeah. I've done, the writers spent five years writing the yeah. script before we even got to the stage we got to. Anyway, so four years is quite fast for right. film. And, and to give you an idea of the timeline, it was we <laughs> shot this movie last November for a month, uh, edited in the, in the kind of winter spring, and then we finished it in August. That was, so it's like about a year from when we shot it. That's actually really quick for a feature length <laughs> film uh, made in this country. Other questions? <laughs> Out there? Sorry. Uh, less of a question, more of a compliment. It's really exciting to see so many locals and Canadians doing such an excellent uh, Canadian script and what a fabulous adaptation by uh, Daniel and Matt. And it's just 
just a real pleasure to sit in the audience and watch our friends work on the big screen. And I want to say thank you guys for sharing and bringing it back to Edmonton because you guys are both awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And I, actually, just on, on that note, I, something I hadn't done that I did today because I was in Edmonton watching it is I counted, we have all these cameo roles, uh, these the really quick moments that we tried to feature a little bit. That was part mm -hmm. of the fun. I counted, and I think, there were, I think there were six or seven Edmonton actors in there that I know that are living in Vancouver right now. Uh, and just, I hadn't really counted before, you know, so it was really neat to, to have uh, friends of mine come on and, and, and you, you know, and help. They were doing me a favor in my mind, but it makes it more fun to watch. Uh, a lot of people that I love, I love their work, and, and uh, I'm happy to have them in, on board. That's great. The Edmonton guys were the guys under the bridge picking the <laughs> coffee out of the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like home being there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, other questions? Uh, so just put up your hand so we can see you, in or yell at Oh, way in the back. Good question. Did you yeah. encounter resistance? And, yeah, what about, yeah. And what particular uh, thing did you see in the play that made you want to adapt right. it into? A well, play? the main thing was, uh, I mean, like I said earlier, and, and we, you know, Daniel and I kind of we connected with Paul. We had the idea of let's do this, and and the idea was, uh, hey, we can shoot this cheaply. It's a two-hander, so we can accomplish this. We'd made shorts before, but never a feature. So we were looking for some material that we loved, and that we figured we could actually do. <laughs> And, and we checked in with Paul. Paul, uh, that was, it was a big deal. I mean, Paul's produced films before, and for him to kind of get behind us and say, yes, I, I think it's a good idea too, that helped. Um, in, terms of, in terms of resistance, I think every step of the way, there was somebody saying, uh, you know, uh, well, it's, it's, it's too much talking, there's too much dialogue, there's too much this. I, I don't know, I mean, when you guys came on, what were your, uh, I'm curious, I'm curious, like, be completely honest here. What were, your, what were your first thoughts? You guys worked in film more than me, and I, I come from theater, so I was kind of impervious to that, and I went, well, yeah, it's a lot of talking. It's an actor's piece, you know, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah, the challenge was to make it uh, dynamic, moving, and visual by having them, if they're talking, have them talking while they're, they're walking, for instance, rather than just sitting, or um, just keeping the action moving so that they're always in motion, so it doesn't feel like a, a staged play. So, yeah, that was the idea, and have many different locations as well, just to break it up so it doesn't feel like it's uh, like on a stage with one location. So we tried to add as many locations as we could as well and uh, add more characters too to, to fill out the world. So, uh, and make it as visual as we can with a lot of the cutaways. So just, yeah, everything that uh, you need to do to make it a, a movie. To that end, uh, it was really redolent in my mind anyway that it was a film from that opening shot where you go through the glasses <laughs> and you pull the focus, it was really beautiful and, and playful, which, which speaks to me of volumes, that it's a film. And it reminded me, it was a little Fellini-esque in its playfulness and absurdity, of course. Other questions? Yeah. Oh, right there, yeah. How, how much negotiation was there involved? Yeah. Um, <coughs> very little. It was surprisingly. Uh, it, it was. It was really about trust. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't about. Um, it was never about money, really. It was. Uh, it was just about Daniel had done a reading with Morris, so he had met Morris. Daniel's an actor, also uh, obviously, but Daniel's an actor in theater and does a lot of work in Vancouver. So he had done a reading around that time with Morris with a a new play that he was working on, and uh, and for me. Uh, he didn't know me, he had no, my name was connected with, uh, I directed seven stories here uh, years ago in like 97, it was the Edmonton premiere of it, so I, hopefully he didn't hear anything awful about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was really, it was really a matter of trust. We got in touch with his agent and, and Morris had to know that we weren't going to, you know, that we were going to respect his work and obviously he, he trusted us enough to take and run with it. And we were lucky with our timing because another group was trying to get the rights as well and we just, Managed to get there first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Other questions? Don't be shy. We have time for a couple more. Pop up your hands. If you have something, yes, right in the middle there. Somebody in the middle. How much, uh, how much final say did he have in the uh, screenplay itself? Or was it totally, was it totally you and uh, Daniel that did the writing? Or did uh, he have a fair amount of say in the final product as well? How much say so did Morris was it have? Was me and Daniel? Or? Yeah. How much say did Morris have in the oh. final product? Uh, well, Morris was very gracious. We, we consulted with him numerous times. Uh, at different stages in the script, we'd connect with him. And he was very generous uh, and very wonderful uh, about it. But it was, it was clear from the beginning, the, the agreement we had with him was that this is our script. And, and he actually was the one who kind of pushed it. He, he at a certain point said, you know, you guys, this is yours. Um, you're, you know, you're taking it. This is very good. And, and I, it was kind of, I could feel it was a little, with a little bit of trepidation because it's hard to let go of your own. But he was understanding that it was a key turning moment. It was, a, it was that, oh, it is ours. We've created our own version of this that belongs on film. And he encouraged us to, uh, the biggest thing that he, he did for us early on was we showed him a draft with characters that we'd created, like Zoe and, and so on. And he, he recognized that there's a certain world that Lawrence Holloman live in that every other character in the movie also needs to be a part of. So it's not these two absurd guys and the realistic, you know, chef and the realistic everybody else. The point is that they are a little bit out there too. And so that helped us. That really helped us kind of go in that direction. It, it emboldened us a bit to do that. He, he gave us permission every step of the way. But in the end, he, he really literally just said, you know, you guys have made this your own. Take it. You know, for better or worse, it's yours. I trust that. I honor that. And that was, uh, that was wonderful. Obvious question, has he seen the movie? We, you know, we, he, we sent him the link. He's in Europe, so, uh, so he's not able to come to any of the screenings in person right now. Mm -hmm. um, but typically, while he's in Europe, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but but he, he hasn't gotten back to me yet, so of course I'm nervous about that. But, uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know what he thinks of it yet. We've he's sent busy. him the link to, uh, to an online version. Uh, so hopefully he's going to love it. Uh, we haven't heard, we, we don't know yet. You've got to get him in But the it's theater. fresh. We, we literally yeah. had our world premiere on Tuesday. <laughs> sensed him on that day, and so we'll see. Wow. One final question, right there in the middle. I'm going to ask, do you know when Super Challenge is going to show up? Probably be sometime in the spring or summer once we have our uh, theatrical release. So it'll be released theatrically once we get distributed in Canada first in theaters, and then shortly after on Super Channel. And on that note, as the social media queen of this team, I'm also going to tell if you like this, we don't have a distributor yet, so please follow us on Twitter, LH the movie. You can tweet us. Um, Matthew's on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. You're, what are you, Matt Kowalchuk? Mm -hmm. Just Matt Kowalchuk with two Ts, Robin underscore film chick with a C. We also have a website, lawrenceandholloman.com, just like the movie. We have a Facebook page. We'd love your presence. If you like this movie, please post, blog, tweet, send it out, share. We're going to be back in Vancouver for October 9th for another screening. So social media is great. And, and, more and, and tomorrow's screening. And tomorrow as well. So please tell your friends if you loved it and everyone laughed. And thanks for coming. And yeah, we want a distributor. So. <laughs> and I just want to say we're honored that we were uh, given the um, Canadian Film Award at the festival here along with the uh, Rising Star Award for Matthew and for Ben Cotton. So we thank the festival for recognizing the film. Uh, I want to say thank you to the film festival too. Uh, this is my third time here and uh, the first two times are with shorts, short films and each time I've been here, and I know I'm from here but it wasn't about that, each time I, I've been here I've felt like I've been treated like royalty and I've been to a number of film festivals and it's not, it's not like that uh, at every one, <laughs> uh, especially when you have a short film and so I just, uh, I think this is, this is one of the best festivals around. And I like to spread that far and wide when I go to other festivals. So thank you for being a, you know, a great audience and supporter of this festival. It's been great to me personally.